Hey there folks, game number two, they brought out Snoot to deal with MMA. Great plan, I think Snoot can tackle even the best of Terran players. We'll see if he can handle it here going up. What the hell is this map called again? Never remember for the hell of me. I like these little displays, really sexy. Terran in the bottom left, MMA, Snoot top right, Zerg player. Oh, I didn't know they were sponsored directly by Twitch. Why not? Look at all them sponsors. That is sick. I like when they do that stuff, and that's what the kind of advertising I can get behind. Anyways, this is a uh, this is a great map for a little bit of mech swimmos play, so that's what I'm hoping for. But I know MMA's pretty big fan of his bio commitment. We'll see which direction this goes. Our first game there, we saw MMA do a pretty good job against Bunny. I think Bunny played it very well. A couple of decisions though just kind of went against them. His drop didn't work out. MMA's drop did. And that was really the deciding factor in the game there. And we'll see what he has in store. This time it looks like it might be Command Center first. Which is super bold. And he just maybe knows Snoot well enough that Snoot is going to be playing this very standard, very economy focused. Nobody likes to drone scale these days. He's going to come down here and expand. And like I said, this is MMA playing the player. Going for this kind of strategy against a Zerg player can be pretty risky. Unless you know that he barely ever cheeses and stuff like that. Whereas if you're up going against somebody like Jadong, for instance, you don't know if you're going to be going up against him. He's going to go three hatch first or just go straight up for like a nine pool uh, and just really kill you. Because if you're going for a low ground CC like this and just four lings, six lings come across the map, that's pretty much GG. Uh, you're just, this is going to get cancelled, you're going to be so far behind even with people committing into attacking units before economy. Snoot will come down here and see this pretty soon. His pool is on the way. We'll see if he goes for a really fast third hatch upon seeing this play. He's going to know that there isn't going to be any Reapers coming out right away. There might be one coming out here slightly delayed. Uh, but he is getting gas to be able to deal with any of the early Reaper and Hellion stuff. Stuff. There goes the gas. Scouting around for any kind of shenanigans, but coming in here and seeing the command center and the barracks timing should make him feel pretty darn safe. I've got to say. Like I said, it was more of whether or not he was going to go for a, a fast third or not. Queen's happening. Orbital on the way. Let's see if he still gets a Reaper out or not. Nope, just a Marine. We'll be going for probably a faster factory. Want to get at least two Marines? just to deal with some links coming across and this is something you can get away with at a pro level but at an amateur level I love opening up with you know still like a 14 pool but making six links if you were to do that right now they'd already be across the map and just murdering all this stuff but at a pro level you can just get away with these kinds of things you know marine looking to shoo away the overlord Surprising spot. Sometimes putting the Overlord over here is good because you can see move outs with it. But Terran can easily lift up a building and get that high ground vision. Whereas over here, a little bit safer. Two Marines out. The standard two Marine reactor timing. This is that risky setup that I was talking about that uh, sometimes you can just get hosed with. I'd love to see just another big round of you know, larva happen and come up with a giant pile of lings and just smoke this. Not even a bunker down in place. It is finally going down now. But on this side, we'll see that Snoot, true to Snoot style, is just going to totally power up to drones. He's got a little supply blocked there. Uh, but he's going to be getting down a hatch, so he's got a little bit of time before he's going to have that money built up anyways. More gas being taken. Not thinking we're going to see any kind of crazy roach stuff. It's not really Snoot style. I've always seen him to be somebody who sits back and waits for his opponent to make a move and just play extremely well. Got some creep started here. Working on extra queens right now. Got two more in production. He is a great spreader of creep. Yeah, he's got to get that overload out of there. Either scout with it or run away with it. Got to do one or the other. First two Hellions coming out. And they're very delayed Hellions, but it's very fast economy. Just like in game number one, we see really fast three command centers out here. Once he knew he was safe. Even before the third hatch is done. Far Zerg opponent. Double Evos at the front, part of a quasi wall off. 
wants to get that creep tumor, he does snag it. But we do have pretty good creep movement already in place. More queens happening. Some speedlings are out now. He's making another big pile. Sometimes you can just get lucky. If you can deny these hellions while they're in small numbers like this, if you catch them whether they're at 2 or 4, uh, it's perfect. It's so hard for them to commit to getting enough up to really get damage done. 11 more drones in production. And you see that's really what he needs to do to keep ahead of his opponent. He's got a nice lead right now, but we're on three command centers with mules. You know, that's just what you need to do to stay alive. Zerglings are in position. You're going to get in, get the surround. That's what I'm talking about. It's just sometimes you just see them not really committing enough to defense. There is a Banshee overhead, which will help. The Hellions are coming back. But these Banshees and Hellions aren't pressuring his units. And he's actually gotten four workers so far. Oh no, Mouse. Not a full wall off. One more, two more. Great little run by. Got a bunker, a couple of marines, six SCVs. Delayed the Banshee and the Hellion push. I, I love playing the exact same way as a Zerg player. Just take a moment, go put on some pressure, force your opponent to, you know, be uncomfortable, and then go into your, your massive tech and everything from there. Uh, pick what your direction is going to be. Baneling Nest, Macro Hatch, Snoot's hitting his stride in a great way. He's getting that creep spread in the main. Lair's about to finish up. He's going to need... Well, he's going to want to get some Overseers. I don't believe there's any cloak done or on the way for these Banshees. Uh, but now they've become defensive Banshees. They've not been able to come out here and really do anything. Creep spread like a monster. Aspire fairly early. I'm seeing a lot of great, smart play out of Zerg players that if they don't really have the economy, they just delay the Aspire in order to make sure they get enough Zerglings, Banelings, take out the first attack and then transition into that Spire. 1-1 one, one we saw just finish up as well. Because we got such a comfortable position right now, it's up to his 75 drones already. Snoot's just been able to power up to his perfect level, creep up the map, take a fourth base, get all this tech. He's just in a great spot. And Snoot would probably be fine to run a no-touch-20 kind of game and then just, you know, plow over people that he's going up against. We see MMA... Just taking his third base and getting it saturated now. This queen is going to die. She got caught in the wrong place at the wrong time. What can you do? Put a little bit of damage in on the Banshee though. Might as well. That's the thing you most want to kill if you have the opportunity. This creep spread is fantastic. Got all of his gases taken. We did just see a scan there. I don't think he has seen the Spire. No, he's not even gone into the main once yet. 1-1 one, one finished, 2-2 two, two slightly ahead for Snoot, but I don't know if that's going to really come into play or not. Handful of Lings and Queens out right now. Queen should focus down that Banshee. Yeah, enough Zerglings there that uh, doesn't want to sit there and tangle for too long. And Overseer with speed as well. Just has everything he needs. Baneling speed's already finished. Just has everything he needs, particularly against a Bio Terran like this. You just... You need that crazy creep spread. You need to have units with all their speed finished, that upgrade count. You know, when you're playing Zerg versus Terran, I think it's one of the most pivotal upgrade matchups, particularly when you're playing like Bio versus Ling Baneling. Every extra little bit of damage and DPS matters so much. I'd love to see Burrow, though. I think that's one thing that's missing right now from the arsenal of our Zerg player. He's got. That Muta count there, big time Baneling. Does save that queen, and pretty good hit on some of those there Marines. Great little take while he was on creep. Snipes down that Banshee. It looks like he might just have enough to want to go for this. His Muta's got way too out in front though. Lost a lot of Mutas in that trade, uh, with his army just a little bit too far behind. Trying to get some of those creep tumors down, but the queens are still alive, so we'll see that recovered pretty fast. Supply lead for Snoot. 2-2 two -two is finishing up for him. few more seconds before it is for the Terran player, so hopefully he waits before really committing to something here. We did hear some Widow Mines burrow. He's 
Zerglings were trying to trigger some of those Widow Mines, but I believe it was just the one in here. He doesn't have a ton of those yet, but he's double making them now behind this. And May did take a pretty good supply lead there. Another supply block for Snoot. Pretty heavy. No, he's actually just got those overloads finishing up. That's a kind of a cool little supply depot wall off there. Gonna come this way, try to get a bit more creep down. I don't know if he's got enough energy for a scan. Doesn't seem to be putting it down. Queen suck up a widow mine shot there, but that will get cleaned up. It's interesting to watch the different styles between somebody like Snoot and say Scarlet. Scarlet loves to get out super amounts of the uh, mutas there and use that to control the map, snipe things, and fly counter pressure. We see Snoot on the other hand really getting a huge baneling and zergling count. Nice snipe on the widow mine there. Those are the biggest threats to him right now. 3-3 is started for the Terran player. The Hive tech is not finished for our Zerg player. No, not the Banelings. Be very careful about spending those Banelings on Marauders. That's what they're there for, to tank shit. There's some Widow Mines in there. Doesn't look like the connections really got off, though. Cleans up some Medivacs as well. This is... Whoa, he's got a flank coming in. Couple of pretty good hits. Oh, that would have been sick. Not quite paying attention enough, though. Pretty dicey little spot. MMA is really down in supply right now. Baneling's morphing in a in a risky position. We see the Mutas coming in specifically to snipe off those Medivacs. Keeping that Medivac count low is so critical. Get rid of the ability to drop, get rid of the ability to run away, and obviously make those stim packs as painful as possible. Still a couple of Widow Mines in position out here. Snoot hasn't cleaned up yet. Hopefully he doesn't roam around the map too far with his Zerglings and Banelings. And hopefully he gets an infestation pit down soon to get up to Hive, so it's 3-3. It doesn't turn out to be as far behind. This army is a long ways on to creep, so you've got to be pretty careful. Fourth base is up and doing great for Snoot right now. We do have additional command centers moving into position right now for MMA. Still down a bit in supply. Let's see if he just puts this into a planetary, it stays a bit safer. Widow Mine did trigger over here, but I don't know if he's paying attention to it or not. Watchtowers are controlled by MMA, surprisingly. With that Muta flock, I'd be just, you know, buzzing around, looking to pick off these different things. Infestation Pit is on the way. Another 23 Banelings in production. Gets the Widow Mine. This is not a very big chunk of units here. I'm kind of surprised they didn't engage that. Here are even more Banelings morphing. Once again, the Snoot style, mass Banelings, more than getting out the mass Mutas. The mass Muta strategy I prefer... But it's just so risky. Once these Thors, for instance, come out and you got this 3-3 bio, if you lose that Mutaflock, you essentially lost the game. Very few people can recover from losing their Mutaflock. Whereas Ling Baneling, uh, you can replenish that much more cost-effectively as long as you don't throw away your Banelings needlessly. <coughs> MMA sniped a lot of Queens. We see them building back up towards Max again, and I'm not too sure exactly... What we've been waiting on here from Snoot. He's not really been applying the counter pressure. Actually, he's got a lot more mutas than I originally thought. Would kind of expect him with his plus two mutas to tangle a bit with some of these marines. The small groups there, just pick them off, keep your opponent at home. These mutas, as soon as they become reactionary like this, and once again, the watchtower sees everything. There we go. As soon as your mutas are just defensive and reactionary, you very quickly find yourself uh, overwhelmed. There's one... Those banelings are just... <laughs> That's a C. That's such a pretty color, too. Lost... Nine, ten? Where are we... Oh, there's the workers going down. Like, where are we losing all these workers? Got a sneaky little drop in behind everything and actually picked off a pretty good chunk of workers. Widow Mines are in position here, and this is where those mutas gotta come in and start flying around with the overseers. Try to see what they can snipe. Nice little high ground drop. Oh, Widow Mines. From both sides. Pretty good splits, but I mean, you can only split so well against just perpetual banelings. Oh, whoa! Those mutas got a huge hit from the Widow Mine and a couple volleys from that Thor. Took a lot of damage. 
He's up pretty good in supply once again, because he's making 78 more Zerglings. Um, there's the Ultralisk Cavern as well, which is great. 3-3 three, three on the way, Adrenal Glands, Chitinous Plating, I believe is... Nope, not sorry yet, just that's the plus 3 Flyer attacks. So Snoot's in a good spot, but he's not really attacked at all this game, other than that first little bit there. He's not really been putting the pressure back on, and when you're doing that, you might be able to just shut them down from doing these drops. He's going to miss that drop, but, you know, with that many mutas, you can clean this base out. Yeah, it's a pretty good chunk of missile turrets, but this Terran needs his economy here. MMA smartly is moving out at the same time as this is happening. Well, the mutas are not in position to help defend. Actually, looks like he might be coming back here. Nice little drop on the high ground. There is a Widow Mine in there as well. Big shot onto the medevac at the same time. Don't lose the queen. I would have mind did not trigger for some reason. We finally see MMA actually taking a supply lead here. Shut down this gold base quite well, and I've seen a lot of you know Terran versus Zergs at this exact same point where it's just about can you control the creep spread essentially on the low ground. Nice shots from the Thor on the low ground into our Muta flock here. And right now the Zerg player just seems a little bit starved. Zerglings catching a bunch of units in transit. And their wall is killed over here. This could be very damaging. Oh wow, they can just squeeze out. Not much of a wall to start with. Didn't get the kill on that base. This is I'm just gonna say this is about time from Snoot to just go and do something against your opponent, right? You can't just always be defensive You've got to find ways to get out there and uh, you know make them uncomfortable Terran player very comfortably on four bases right now well I mean two of them are probably mined out completely but he's gonna probably be shifting over for this gold base pretty soon Thor in the background plus one attack plus two armor he's gonna be able to help clean up a lot of those mutas he's gonna try to move some creep again here with some Queens He's got to be a little bit careful though, He's this is right where the Terran player wants to attack from. It's right off of this fourth base. More mutas in production right now from Snoot. One ultra. He's uh, just, for all these bases, he's fairly economy starved. He's down to 58 workers. Which, uh, I mean, it's not a great number when you've got to really try to replenish your army quite fast. Now that MA's got this gold base fairly securely, was harassing this base. Got to give the lead to MMA right now. He's finally only getting his, you know, drilling claws for his widow mines right now, though. That's a little bit delayed. Sees the Muta flock go by. This might be his time to really pressure this other base, though. Big pile of banelings. Might be able to snipe this hatch. Gets the Baneling before can shoot, snipes the Thor really quick as well. This is why I'd love to see some Burrowed Banelings. We're not seeing the Terran player scanning ahead. These choke points, a couple of Banelings in there, and you can wipe out so many units. Uh, and you just force them to always be aware of things. So I would really, really love uh, for that to come into play. Very Scarlet-esque. Production MMA is super comfortable right now. I'm sure he's not afraid of anything. There's barely been any times the Zerg players really attacked or harassed him. His economy is going full bore, and he's going to start banking here pretty quick. Getting down all the extra missile turrets, bunkers. And he's even got this extra base down here that he's going to take right now. That hasn't been mined from at all. So just the cost effectiveness from MMA is... If this game goes an hour long, he's going to be in a better position. He's going to have more access to economy. Got to drop up here in the north. Two flocks of mutas actually is taking care of a lot of different things at once. Another drop over here. Widow mine is in that flock. Hopefully there's detection. Yes, there is. So we'll clean this up. He lost another 11 workers. He's down below 50. One ultra. It's been a baller. Chitinous plating has not been researched though. 
that would be kind of important if he was going that direction. If he was going to go into that, though, I'd expect to see pathogen glands and, uh, you know, getting those infestors out, which could be really smart. We see MMA a lot of times clumping up his units. Both players are starting to really bank a lot of stuff right now. A lot of Widow Mines over on this side. Looks like he finally maybe wants to attack. Snood getting out more Ultras. Not a bad attack from him there. There's not much for Medivacs for this army right now, which is weird. He's finally producing a bit more to go along with it and trying to go for some more drops. MMA has been a bit stifled as well. Maybe he's been a little bit hesitant. He did kill off this gold base once, but he really hasn't been pressuring it again. Big hits from the Thors there. Oh, come back, you mouse. A lot of Marauders in this army that are really getting picked off. And Slash. Oh, he does pick up the Thor. That'd be a great medevac snipe. Does drop the Thor finally. Pretty good attack from snoot there does get that base down takes a huge supply lead remax is fast the turn player i mean yeah they can have a bank but they just can't remax as quickly as if you're banking up larva and all of a sudden spend it all in one spot snoot smells blood right now he knows he's got a great opportunity the planetary fortress isn't here right now to be able to defend anything I mean, those guys are just going to waddle home. Going to move that creep once more. Watchtower has really never been in the possession of Snoo this whole game. But he's up by 70 supply. It looks like he's just going to make this Ultra Ling, Bane Ling, Muta style just work. No tech beyond that. Bit of a problem for gas right now for Snoo. I'd like to see him take these extra refineries. Losing the production facilities, do whatever damage you can at this point. Snoot's taking a huge lead, get the Terran to fall back, be ultra defensive. And it looks like he's just going to be really baller and take this base as well, which would be really, really cool. Small drop over here, got four workers before it's going to be cleaned up. Oh, Widow Mine kind of does some friendly fire damage, doesn't quite get the hatch, 55 health left. And regenerating. Looks like he's just going to try to go for it right away. Two Marauders can do a lot of fast damage to a hatch. It does get it cancelled. This drop should clean this up. Oh, no, he's got the transfuses in place. Uh, he does have boost, but I don't think he wants to use it. Nope. There's a planetary down here, and this is a pretty fresh base. It's going to be there for a while. Snoot, on the other hand, is mined out. He's got some idle stuff, but he's mined out just about everything he has. This base is one of the most fresh, and it's already just about half mined out. Well, MMA is slowly building himself back into it again. Never give up. He's going to keep using these drops. Drops are how you get back into a game. It does pick off one drop on that side. Doesn't have anything in position against this wall, though. Even an Overlord or some more creep spread. Hopefully he sees that. I don't know if he does or not. Did actually sit and fight some marines. A little funky. He's got 3-2 on his units. This medevac is going to say hello to a spore crawler. Not much for defense in this base. You know, some expensive tech in here. Let's see what he focuses on. There's going to be the ultralist cavern, and that's going to go down really darn fast. Whereas over here, he's I'm guessing just happy to trade all that stuff off. Gonna lose the spire. Nope, he doesn't lose the spire actually. Double medevacs go home just in time. Otherwise, they would have been picked off in the air, and that would have been unrecoverable, I would say, for MMA to lose about 20 supply of marines and medevacs. With the money that Snoot has, I figure maybe just a spore and a spine. It might be wise just to be able to delay some more of these drops just take these on here yeah he 
Gets himself a couple of Widow Mines. Sensor Tower is a great kill. Be able to deny that movement where things are at. He might just go for Mass Baneling Crush here. Just blow through this whole pile of stuff. I did hear some Widow Mines in here. Ooh, looks like a pretty good hit on one of those Widow Mines. Got a lot of stuff. Surprised he didn't just go for it with all the units in this choke. Run the Banelings just straight through it. War Zoglings on the way. A few more drones as well. Probably hasn't replenished those in a while after all these little drops here and there. have really cleaned things up. It's another drop. It's going to give MMA the opportunity though to come out and clean some creep. Get it off of his doorstep, which is where it was. And now this pretty much entire map vision. MMA is playing as scrappy as he can here, uh, but I think it's just uh, maybe too little, too late, pretty quick. Oh, blammo! Didn't quite get that meta back. 17 hit points left. Snoot is remaxing on more ultras right now. He's got all the mutas I'm sure he needs. Oh, great widow mine hit, but there's the GG. Interesting play out of Snoot. I would say that he's. It takes him like half hour to be aggressive, but when he does finally get into the position he wants, I guess it's pretty hard to stop. Series is all tied up 1-1. We're going off into game number three.